a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. You have also forgotten exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain in the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reported by him, reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as his sons. For what son is there whom the father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your droopy hands and your weak knees, make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed. Strive for peace with everyone, for, 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 and for that holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter roots spring up and cause trouble, through which many may become defiled. The word of the Lord. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity toward those who fear him, and his justice, justice toward children's children among those who keep his covenant. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given to him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. I suppose a good question we should ask ourselves is, how amazed is the Lord at our faith? Or how lacking is it at times? And what can we do to strengthen or increase that faith? Well, our letter to the Hebrews again gives us a very loud clue, perseverance. And of course, that was sort of the theme of Hebrews yesterday as well as 
running the race, and we know that when there's a goal set in mind, you can only reach that goal if you persist, you persevere. The writer of Hebrews then tells us that in our struggle against sin, meaning temptation, and every one of us here is not immune to temptation, but we have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. That sounds pretty drastic, doesn't it? Well, he's not speaking of literal blood, but he is talking about how hard the road is in that persistence, in that perseverance, so that our faith can increase in our lives. It does take, if we really work at it, and if we really take it seriously, and I think we probably should since it means everlasting life, it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Again, not so much literally, but proverbially, it, it takes a lot of hard work and effort on our part, cooperating with the grace that God gives us. We need to be people of prayer. We need to be disciplined in our fasting. And we need to be doing good works. And as I oftentimes use that analogy, it's like any other discipline, if we're going to be good at it, we need to be coached, we need to condition ourselves, and we need to practice. Whether you're a musician or an athlete, those three things have to be there. It's blood, it's sweat, and it's tears if we want to be really, really good at it. And the same is true with our faith life as well. We need to have an active prayer life every day. St. Paul tells us we need to pray ceaselessly. We might say, how the heck can I do that all day long? Well, if we practice at it, even in the midst of our work, we can be bringing our thoughts to the Lord even for a few moments, just even reciting the sacred name Jesus as we do our work. But we also need to set aside that special time each day in which we're quiet, recollected, and we're coached. That's what prayer is. It's our conversation with the divine coach. And we need, of course, to then to discipline ourselves. Our human nature is flawed and weak. It gets lazy. And we can very easily allow the distraction of the things of this world to get in the way as obstacles. And fasting, whether that be from food or from anything else, teaches us that we can keep ourselves under control, that we are not what Darwin or Freud or any of these other crazies said in the years past that we have no control over our destinies. We do. We do have free will, but we have to keep it under control. And finally, we also need to condition, not only condition ourselves, but we need to practice our faith as well. And that is, do, is done with love. It's done with kindness. It's done with charity. And that's how we live our faith actively. In all this, then, our faith will increase. Jesus will be amazed, then, by our faith. So let us pray today to allow that faith to grow. It's a free gift from God, but we must now allow it to nurture and grow in our daily lives. We do that through our prayers, through our fastings, and through our good works. Grateful for the love and guidance that God extends to us each day, we offer our prayers to our loving and merciful Father in heaven. For Pope Francis, may the Holy Spirit sustain him in his ministry as he spreads the gospel of life and the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected officials, may they turn to the Lord for guidance in seeking ways of governing with righteousness and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who struggle with their faith, may they experience the Lord's love and mercy along their spiritual journey and turn back to God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of our parish, may our words and actions promote greater respect for life and human dignity in our community, let us pray to the Lord. 
We pray for the intention of this Mass this morning for Alex Van Lannen, Joe Lane, the repose of his soul. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for all who have died. Especially let us remember the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father Leopold Garus, Father Omar Champagne, Father Francis D. Rose, and Father Arthur J. Danks, and for all our loved ones, that they may be assisted by our prayers and through God's grace and mercy, come to, in into, to enter into eternal life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Redeemer of all, hear our prayers, and in your mercy grant us what we need according to your will. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 